Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming out. I'm your host, Nim Fred, ODG, and this evening we got a special feature, Project Ghost. DJ Lordy, huh? That's some bullshit. That's coming from your phone? No, but I have her phone. Come on. Yo, what's up, y'all? Wild Cherry Pepsi. Soraka, much finer vodka. Welcome to the Fat Joe Show presented by the one and only Cash App. Use code Fat Joe to sign up to Cash App and get 15 free dollars. Why a million people ain't do it yet? They need to do it. Go to Cash App, sign up, use code Fat Joe, and you will get 15 free dollars. Simple as that. And so today I went out there, man. I went, first of all, let's talk. Jesse Smully at guilty. I wish that on no man alive. Terry Flannery is on the check in BMF. My brother Southwest T. But listen, I wish that I'm no man. But the problem is, you got to be realistic sometimes. I don't know who was around him. He was walking in the court with 20 people, looked like they care about him. They should have told him, my man, they got you on tape choreographing with the African cock diesel twins. And they got you writing the check. They, yo, you. It's a rap. And so sometimes when it's a rap and you know it, you don't want to do that time because nobody wants to face that time. One thing is certain, death, and another thing is you fuck around and be in jail tonight. or not, You can do it any which way you want. Throw a rock at a car, argue with a cop, whatever. You can go to jail. So this can happen to anybody. But Terry Flint, not Terry Flint, fuck with yo, Terry Flint. You did too much time for this shit. Uh, but uh, Jesse Smullyett, he's on tape. They got all the fucking proof. Somebody should have told him, man. Cop out. But nobody wants to accept that reality where they say, all right, do a year in jail, do six months in jail, whatever. They just don't want to check themselves in. But now they're going to give him real time and I don't know how how much time is involved with this or it's a jail time or whatever I wish the man the best I wish they would have told them uh, that he wasn't going to win I told you that he was not going to win it's an impossible case and these uh, African dudes they fuck dudes I've never seen some guys so proud to snitch. <laughs> Yo, Dre. Happy birthday, Dre of Cool and Dre. Happy birthday, my brother Rich the Barber. Two of my best friends on earth. Their birthday the same day. Bing, bong. I mean, and so before I put my guest on, who's insanely viral, uh, I went to Casa Della on the Lower East Side. I had to go personally because I hate what's being done to them. They've been around for over 50 years in the Lower East Side, the greatest Puerto Rican food. I don't care if you go to the island here, wherever. Nothing's better. And so I went down there because I feel so bad. I sat down with Lewis and the family. They don't want no help. They don't want Fat Joe's help. And, and they just want to get work out a deal with the landlords to lower the rent, to not lower the rent, but just don't increase it as much. They try to jump it up 6,450%. That shit ain't right. And this business has been a landmark in this community. People have been raised in Casa Adela and brought their kids to Casa Adela. We refuse and we can't have them get shut down. That is not a go. 
So, Lower East Side, Saturday, 10 to 12. Peace. Peaceful assembly. Peace. You're not coming in peace. You're not coming in unity. Do not come out there. These are peaceful people who work hard and love the community. Peace. If you want to support Casa Adela, everybody come out there from 10 to 12. Let me get my guest on. You see, the man is on there. So like I said, breaking news today, Jesse Smollett found guilty. I told you that before it happened. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been dealing with the law so much in my life that uh, I know a thing or two. <laughs> and uh, it's impossible to get up out of that thing. I don't see the God. I, s I sent the text. I sent the, the, the uh, request. And so, Angola, Luanda. Man, if y'all know the stories about me uh, and that Luanda, that Angola. You know what I'm saying? That's where, I don't want to say kidnap, but I was... Uh, Friendly extorted, friendly kidnapped in Angola. But I love the people of Angola. The people of, of Angola are beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, always showed me love. So the people, even though the powers that be had me up in there, um, the people were beautiful to me in Angola. So I love Angola, Luanda. Uh, I would say it's my favorite place in Africa. And I've been all over Africa. I've been in, you never heard of this place. Have you ever been to Djibouti, Africa? Nah, you ain't been to Djibouti. You ain't been to Djibouti. I've been in Zimbabwe. I've been in Kenya. I've been in South Africa. I've been in Morocco. I've been in Ghana. I've been in Garbon. I've been in, uh, you can't, man. Equatorial get. Like, you cannot understand how many places I've been in Africa. But if there was, if I had to claim one as my own, it would be Angola, Luanda. And you understand, Africa was colonized just like the Caribbean. So, technically, Jamaicans, Haitians, Bahamians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, uh, are all the same people just got colonized by different people. So Africa is the same way. You go to Nigeria, they colonized by French. You go to Angola, they colonized by Portugal. You go to Equatorial Guinea, they colonized by Spain. So you in Africa, the heart of Africa, and everybody's talking in Spanish. Everybody's talking in Spanish. They're black. Africans talking in Spanish. I'm there one day, Group on Nietzsche's performing Gran Combo. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? We in Africa. You gotta study your shit. A lot of you guys act like you know something, you don't know shit. No, I wanna go to Egypt. Bad. Yo, but where's my man at? Like, this is getting out of control. Like, like yo, where you at? Coley Alice Fathers. I speak the truth, bro. I mean, I've been to Djibouti, Africa. There's a place called Djibouti, Africa. Does anybody see my brother Nems on there? Tonight, Drake, Kanye. Now, I don't like... According to my daughter, I don't like that uh, they're making it only the last two albums. It ain't like 
song for song. And they, it ain't a versus, but it, to me, it's a versus. So I got my popcorn ready. I'm going in the movie theater. There go my brother. Love this guy. Fell in love with him the minute I met him. In fact, I didn't even meet him. I, I see, I'll tell you the story. And so I knew something special about this guy. And if you notice, people think me picking beats, people think, for some reason, man, I can't get this guy. I've been trying. So some people say picking beats. Some people say making hits. Y'all names. Bing bong. Bing bong, fuck your life. Yo, man, let me tell you something. My biggest, thank you for being on the show. Thank my you. biggest, let's, yo, man, my biggest gift in hip hop has always been discovering talent. Like me just walking outside of Bodega, bumping to Big Pony becomes a sex symbol, a Remy, Remy Ma, DJ Khaled, right? Thanks. So when I met you, I didn't technically meet you. I went out there to the rock steady, uh, anniversary in Puerto Rico. Yep. And I had my wife, my daughter with me, and you went on stage and we fell in love with you. Like immediately I was like, and when I watched you, I said to myself, yo, this this early fat Joe, this this <laughs> yo, you wanna hear the story? This is the story. I wanna hear. So I go out there and meet Steve. Shout out to my boy UFO. Right? UFO B, my brother. My guy. We go out there, we in Puerto Rico, we in motherland, right? He's like, yo, crackers come out and perform, and they take us to this crazy ass cave in Puerto Rico, put a stage in front of it. I'm like, green perform. I wish I was performing. I come there, Uncle Dan goes, yo, when Steve is performing before Joe comes out. Steve is like, nah, I ain't doing it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Fee like, yo, you know, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, Fee, we in the motherland. Was like, you bugging. I was like, yo, give me that fucking microphone. Especially this mic. Like, when when you first pulled up, I put, we came to see you with Fee. You gave me like, like yo, and I, like, the nigga. So I was like, oh, crack don't know me. I was like, I got to show, I got to show and prove. You know, this is, this is Joe Crack. Like the I just, you know, Puerto Rican from New York, you, we grew up off of you. You pun, nigga, the legend. I was like, yo, I gotta make myself known. I grabbed that mic every time I had him. I was like, pressing, and thank God it did. And you did it. You did a song. You did a song called "Fuck You" or something, right? Garbage. Your SoundCloud is garbage. Your mix SoundCloud is garbage. Your shit is garbage. And I was like, yo, this motherfucker raw. And my daughter was like, I like this guy. This guy's great, dad. And, 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 and with no disrespect, I, uh, you reminded me of me. Like, an uh, early Fat Joe in the 20s, 19. And I knew why my daughter liked you because there's a connection. And like, when um, I went on BET, they asked me in, uh, in, uh, BET in the rap city, and they said, Is there any artist that reminds you of you? And I said, Yeah, it's an artist named Nems from Coney Island. That's before all this viral shit popping off, Nems. Yo, that's that's the first look. This year, everything been going like this, right? Then when you said that, that shit said like this, and then it just took off from there. Like, you set it off, crack. It was, and you set this whole shit off. Listen, Nems. I'm glad I did that because you're a beautiful man. Thank you. Uh, let me tell y'all a story what Nems did for me one day. Nems, uh, he saw somebody selling a jacket that belonged to one of my closest friends that passed away online. And he thought it wasn't a good look. And Nems went on, his, uh, on e eBay or whatever, and you bought it for a couple of grand. Yeah. And he said, yo, crap, you in New York? So you come to the store and you give me the jacket and you say, yo, it wasn't a good look. They were selling your man's jacket with his name. And I really, 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 I always fucked with you, but I really appreciated, you know, the dignity and, and, and the morals and the respect 
that you had for doing that, man. And I, I wanted to tell the world that. And so now you get on Instagram and you do. Okay. That was the least I could do. My two cousins got killed, man. And if somebody was selling their jackets, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are my hearts, my two cousins. If I seen that somebody was selling their stuff online, like, I wouldn't want it up there anyway. But I was just looking for Ava Rex. And the terror squad said, oh, I got to get this. Oh, and I seen it said Raul right there. And I was like, when I hit you, I was like, yo. He was like, yo, that's my man's pack. Oh, nah, I'm getting this off. Man, that's got to be yours. I don't want somebody to same for me, man. Very classy move. You know you're coming in and out. Your mic is coming in and out. All right, bet. So bet. Got it. let's see if we get it right. But listen, so I know you was promoting your new album. Yep. And you are fucking hilarious. So Fat Joe would be like that if he ain't get to this level where they expect me to be a nice guy, <laughs> role model. Fat Joe would be on the block telling people, fuck your life. Yep. Don't disrespect me with your <laughs> cone head. Don't this, like that's me. Like me growing up, that's that's me all day. So I watch you on Instagram, and I'm like, yo, this guy's funny as fuck. And um, <laughs> literally, I know I'm in the house, and I'm like, you know, I'm laughing at your shit. And my daughter goes and she says, yo, dad, you know about that? Bing bong and this and this. I said, yo, this is my man. I told her this is the guy we saw in Puerto Rico, and she said. She said, no, this is the biggest shit in the world. I said, no way. Stop. I told my daughter, stop. You got to stop. You mean my man Nems is on fire like that? It's, she showed me little Nas X. All that, yo, what yeah. the fuck is going on, man? No, Will Smith just did it. Will Smith just did it today. Will Smith just did the bing bong? The fresh... The Fresh Prince. Uh, right before I signed on, somebody sent it to me. I said, oh, shit. It's Will lit. Will Smith just did the shit. Will Smith, bro. It's that culture, man. It's You You talking that real shit. They can't buy that shit. Yo, they you know what it, it was? <laughs> bro, I've been, people, a lot of people that just finding out about me have, uh, like, yo, you're an overnight success, bro. This, shit, this overnight success took 20 years, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving every minute. I ran into Jim Jones last night. He kept it a buck with me. Shout out to Jim. I never met him. He came right up to me and said, yo, he kept it how an older artist. I had an alarm for you. Um, he did it how an older artist should come to a new artist. He said, yo, get every dollar. Like, there wasn't no cameras around. Jim Jones kept it a buck. And it was like, like, like it was the best advice. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm just enjoying this, man. Like, like I always knew if I just stuck to myself and stayed with the process, it's going to work out, man. I never switched up. Even when they were snapping and bouncing, you doing music, I ain't switch up, man. I kept doing this type of music that I'm still doing today because I knew eventually people would catch up. Man, let me tell you something. I've seen you one time. I knew you was a star. Um, and, and my quote is, you got to stay in the game. You never know. Yep. Right? So... So Fat Joe, if he ever coined anything, a phrase, it's you got to stay in the game. You never know. And mm -hmm. so meaning that if you're at the right place at the right time, you're doing positive things, you're moving forward, you getting your hands dirty, you working, you this, something might happen. And so you've been rapping your whole life, but now out of nowhere, they loving you for your fucking street Common. side commentation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This shit, Whatever you call the Dominican hoes. You told them, don't ever come around me looking like, like yo, and yo, you funny as fuck. Yo, this regular shit that I do without the cameras on. You know what I'm saying? And then just one day when the album was coming out, I was like, yo, I got seven days left that the album's about to come out. I got to promote this shit. So, yo, turn on the cameras. Whoever passes by, turn on the camera. Everybody's getting it. Yo, don't ever disrespect my album coming out in three days looking like fucking Freddy Krueger without the mask. You know what I'm saying? Just like whatever whatever the case was, it was all about promoting the album. Now I seen people loved it, and I was like, yo, we got something here. Bing bong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and when did you realize that the motherfucker went on fire? Well, that was the don't let... See, I got that, the don't ever disrespect. But the bing bong shit, that shit just... Yo, that shit...
Look, yo, that happened overnight. I'm not going to front, bro. That shit. Yo, one night, people just started doing it. I was like, yo, what's going on here? And then they're just like, it's just being bong. Because I, I seen I, I seen some girls come up to you like in front of a hotel or something. And they was like, oh my God, you bing bong. Fuck yo, your life. I'm like, oh shit. I love shit. it. My whole career, people been telling me, yo, you'll never make it with fuck your life. It's too vulgar. Bro, I got little kids in Nebraska screaming, fuck your life now. So fuck everybody's life that said they wouldn't make it. Stupid. The way I do it is this. I watch everybody. I watch a bunch of people become successful in their own way. I personally refuse to do some corny shit or sell out or do some shit like this. So I met some other, I know some other people who made it way bigger than me faster. You understand? But I said, yep. I got to do it my own way. I'm not playing myself or doing some corny shit. You know, motherfuckers die on Instagram hanging off a fucking bridge Absolutely. Yo. trying to catch a selfie. Yup, yup, bro. And so I'm not that dude. I said, look, I know my talk game is crazy, hence why we on the big, big show. And I said, sooner or later, motherfuckers going to catch on and know Joe talking that shit, and it's going to take off. And thank God we doing shit like we doing New Year's Eve. Ten, nine, yeah. eight, seven, <laughs> six. So the biggest, the biggest, bro. I gotta show. I gotta tell you where I'm at, so you can come down there and do a bing bong on I'll fucking TV. Ten, nine, eight, seven times square. Bing then bong. we do Wendy Williams the first week. The whole so this shit leading. I say you gotta stay in the game. You never know, and the shit might lead to other shit. And so uh, what type of opportunities are coming your way? Or is it just so early that... Nah, nah, that, opportunities that... are coming. Opportunities are coming. Like, bro, left and right, I'm on the phone literally from the time I wake up to the second I fall asleep. It's constantly... Yo, first of all, my Instagram, forget it. I had to turn the notifications off. That's why I didn't see your message till this morning. I had to turn that shit off. That shit is constantly no, nonstop. That's cool. Labels. Yo, you want to stay independent? You want this? Yo, we got this for you. We got that. All right, that's cool. Then we got the club appearances. I'm taking everything. Every Jim, now you gotta like take Jim, everything. Just like Jim Jones told me last night, take every dollar they try to give to you. You, it's a fact. I still do it myself. Like there's motherfuckers that can watch me and say, "Damn, this crap broke." Because the way I work, I work <laughs> like I'm broke. I'm taking all that. Yo, bro, I work. Li listen, I got like two weeks. I wouldn't say off because I'm shooting some commercials, yeah. but I'm home for like two weeks and I do the New Year's Eve and I'm like, yo, bro, you know, I, I get I get to the bag, right? Facts. But I'm still like nervous, like, yo, why am I not doing nothing for two? Like, I got to get to the bag. Yo. Like, that's just the way I am. Like, I got to go get it. I got to go get it. And so I know you big in merch. Yeah. Do we already have the Bing Bong shirts? The fuck your life. That's, that's ever... been going crazy. The Bing, I got don't ever disrespect me shirts, hoodies, hats, shirts. I got Bing Bong. That's going crazy. I Bing Bong I own. I trademarked it. So if you try to use it, I'm suing anybody. You know what I'm saying? I've been on that. Um, we got hey, even my hey yo. You know what I'm saying? Like when he was like, yo, Byron, take me to dinner. I said, hey yo, I got that on the shirt. Every FYL dot NYC, get all that bing bong shit right there. But you see how this works, right? Because you was moving that merch without the heat behind you. You knew how to move that merch. You see yep. how God puts it together. Absolutely. And so now you are the king of merch. And now you got your shit flying off the shelves. So you can put something you know in connection with this. Absolutely. It's just the way it goes. Yo, it's listen, you, you mentioned God, man. Like, my mother's heavy, a uh, heavy church lady, heavy God. She even is a preacher. I believe I'm here because of my mother's prayers. I got a praying mother that prays for me every day to win. I got two cousins that passed away that watch over me every day for me to win. I was at their gravesite today talking to them like, yo, I know it's y'all. I know it's y'all that's doing this, and y'all still right here with me. But yesterday I was at a party, and there was a big, Big, big executive, you know what I'm saying? But 
he was moving funny. So I talk, I know his man. So his man was like, yo, I was like, yo, your man didn't even come up and give me a pound. He was like, that's God watching you. He got so much negative energy around him. That was God taking his head. Don't even want that energy. Listen to me, man. All these executives full of shit. Back. All these people <laughs> full of shit. Back. They're not your friend. They'll never be your friend. Don't believe them. Even if they give you a big check, they're full of shit. Yep. Listen, bro. You done did it your own way for this long. Mm -hmm. I know you might be like, yo, I just want the check. Listen, you'll be miserable after you get the check. So be smart. Stay on, on your independent grind. Stay under the radar. Keep selling your merch. Keep yep. doing that. Turn this into fucking TV commercials. Turn this into this. <laughs> turn this into everything. Yo, this Shaq told me that too. Ball. Bing bong. Like, Bing bong. I tried to get Shaq on the remote. I was like, yo, Shaq. Shaq, DM me. Yo, you got the hardest shit out right now. I said, yo, Shaq, I know you got balls, bro. Stop playing with me, bro. Send me some. Send me a verse. He, that's, the, that's the video I posted. He was like, nah, I can't. He said, yo, I'm doing a commercial right now. I can't follow you to Michael Jordan and this shit right now. I can't. I said, yo, Shaq calling me, Jordan? I was like, yo, bro. I was like, that. I was like this. There was crack and Shaq. Boom. Right there. My, my <laughs> ears set, bro. You know what I'm saying? Crack and Shaq. You know, that's a new show for you. Bing bong. Crack and Shaq. Crack and Shaq. Bing bong. But what I'm telling you is, um, you very blessed and highly favored. Absolutely. And so it's just because of the person you are. Can you tell us your journey? I know you Coney Island's mayor. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Tell us your journey, man, because we, we, you know, <laughs> these people, they just go bing bong. They don't know what the Nah, fuck. nah, man. Listen, um, 12 years ago, I was sleeping on the lifeguard chairs in Coney Island in the wintertime, sleeping in project staircases, addicted to wild, crazy drugs. I mean. everything else I did, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was homeless, I was a junkie, I was in and out of jail, and it came to a point where I was like, yo, I can't live like this. I'm either gonna be dead very soon, or I'm gonna be in jail very soon for the rest of my life. And from that day on, I stopped doing everything. I begged my mother to let me sleep on her couch that night, and from that point on, 12 years ago, I never touched nothing. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do nothing, you know what I'm saying? And ever since then, I, I bought my mother a house. I bought myself a house, you know what I'm saying? I just put an in-ground salt water pool. But like, where I'm from, that's why I call myself the mayor, because everybody in my hood see me at my lowest point, walking the ab, asking for dollars, and now they see where I'm at today. They see it ain't like I'm a mayor, I'm above you. No, I'm the mayor because I know everybody and I show everybody like, yo, y'all see me at the bottom and now I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And um, listen, the last nine years I've been working sanitation. I've been a garbage man for the city of New York. I just, I'm about to resign next week. You know what I'm saying? Like, life is good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm at- You know you hustle. No matter what, I'm hustling. I'm up at 4 a.m. every morning and I'm not, I take, I might take a little cat nap, but I go, I will go to work then come home, do the studio, do the merch, do everything. This is my dream. I'm not willing to give up my dream. I've been working at this for 20 years. And like, that's like working a job and you're about to retire and then you just quit. Nah. You know what? Let me shout out Cash Cap because Cash Cap is our partner. Bing and bong. they're giving everybody $15 for free if they sign up and they use the code Fat Joe, F A T J O E, you get 15 Free dollars after this show. Go to Cash App, sign up. The code is Fat Joe. Get fifteen free dollars. Now, what I'm saying to you is, people see you in your lowest. They see you working. They see you grinding, right? So you've seen the world. See, I never got high. Never got high. I sold a lot of yonder. I'm not gonna lie. I got family members that got high. Fuck their life up. In the, in the worst way you could think of. Absolutely. And so I learned, I got a thing where I learned from other people, other people's mistakes. So my mother and father, they smoked a lot of cigarettes. My mother fought cancer. Thank God she beat the cancer, but I knew I never wanted to smoke. You know, I got a brother that was on the drugs, heavy, heavy, heavy. So I knew I didn't want to use the drugs. And I never used it because I might like it. Thanks. And that's what people got to understand. I never used it because I'm like, let me, and it's, you know, but you, being that God gave you, because everything is a lesson in life, Absolutely. right? So being that God gave you that lens to where he's seen you at the doctor's, when you're using drugs, it's, a, it's another world. And Absolutely. Like the rest, 
Absolutely, brother. I'm, I feel like I live two different lives. That's why nothing in this rap game that's coming at me right now is even it's a piece of cake. After what I've been through, this is nothing. I can handle anything. Now that's how I feel. That 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 that's how I feel. When you've been to the bottom, there's no way to go but up. You heard? That's a fact. And so and so it's amazing to see all these people do this shit. I just hope this thing just turns into big money for you. Shout out to Grand Poobah. The legend. Living legend. Poobah. The legend. Yo, Poobah, what's up, baby? Yo, Yo Grand Poobah be hitting me up. Yo, that's a trendsetter. He was the flyest guy back in the 90s with all that polo and all that. I haven't seen him now. That's why I, I said in the 90s, but he probably still, still fly, the flyest. Still fly, still my man. He, he calls me every other day. Uh, you know what's crazy? What's weird? Yesterday alone, I had Poobah call me. Maxwell, the singer, <laughs> Q-Tip. I was hanging with Sean. Uh, MC Light was texting me. And it's like a fucking dream come true to have everybody I respect in hip hop just be hitting me up, like Texas and shit like that. It's a dream come true. So shout out Grand Poobah. He been there for me since day one. Um, Where you hope to take this? I know musically you have been putting out heat. Mm -hmm. You have been fired. Thank you. I, has this put like attention on your music? Absolutely. Look, Camelo was just spinning it. It's on 105, Hot 97. Cat, uh, DJ Charisma hit me in LA. She's spinning it tonight. It, it now it's now it starts the music part. But also, I just did a stand up comedy shit last week, bro. That shit was mad. I was mad nervous, bro. That shit was. I just got on stage and wrote me. Y'all don't ever disrespect me looking like Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know, I was killing it. I was killing them. You know and everybody was laughing. Hilarious! I got. They just sent me the clips. I'm gonna post that on my gram like a dance. I always show. wanted to do stand up. No, I told the dude, yeah, I host it. I got there. I seen the crowd. I said, oh no, I don't know if I could do this. Cause it's like, intense. You can't yo, bullshit it. Yo, a comedy club. You can't yeah. bullshit it. <laughs> I was yo. Never was scared to get on the mic and rap. I was scared to death. I was like, yo, I'm gonna go up there and bomb. I was like, yo, but you know what? I got to do this. Like, I got to try it out. If I suck, I suck, whatever. But I got to try it out. At least to say I did, yo. I, I got some, I wasn't like the best, but it's a learning process, yo. I got a whole new respect for stand-up comedians after doing that. Oh, yeah, nah, nah, it's right on you. Yeah. And so you want to know what's crazy? They said Kim Kardashian want to do Madison Square Garden on some stand-up comedian shit. Like, she did great. It's Saturday Night Live, but to yeah, do yeah, Madison yeah. Square Garden, bro? That's a whole different thing. And, and, and you know, they say, no, you can't put makeup on and fake this shit. Like, this shit. Right. Like, right. if you bomb, you bomb. Like, right. this, that shit real. You got up there and you noticed it was real. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I just started. My cousin was in the crowd. I just started joking on him when I got nervous. I was like, "Yo, die, man! You got the missing tooth. You washed up. Don't ever disrespect me." He was tight after. I was like, "Bro, I had to do it. I ain't have nobody else." Yeah, so, so, you know, sometimes we go hard on our people, but they don't realize, like, yo, when all else fails, we gotta fall hard on you. Like, we got, we gotta get out of this jam. <laughs> With you, you know, I did stand up one time. My man Chris Comedy, uh. My boy, he brought me up there. He said, man, you so funny. I want you to go. So I, I, I went up there and I told some uh, Mike Tyson and R. Kelly stories. <laughs> like stories I had with them this before yeah, R. Fact. Kelly and controversy. And, they, you know, they was laughing and all that shit. But it's a dream of mine to do a stand-up comedy one day and just really, really kill it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's crazy. You got a remix coming up, huh? Yeah. What about the Knicks? The Knicks is using your song, huh? The Knicks. I mean, they yo, uh, that's that's another whole another avenue. They every time they hit a three point in the garden, they yelling "Bing Bong." Every time they dunk in the garden, they yelling "Bing Bong." Yo, this shit is everywhere, everywhere. But it was it started as the Knicks thing, you know what I'm saying? But now it's just. It's worldwide, bro. It's over. When you did the commercial, I was happy to see you on the commercial. Last year, yeah, yeah, Last yeah. Last year when you was up on there talking your shit. Facts. Nah, bro, the Knicks show me mad love, man. Salute to the whole Knicks organization. I'm going to probably be... I was with Taj Gibson's people the other day uh, in Atlanta. Oh, no, he City. go hard. Yeah, yeah. He go and hard. He's from Brooklyn. Like 
Um, tonight, right after that's why I started earlier, is uh we got a whole bunch of food. We got popcorn. We going in my movie theater. It's Drake and Kanye. Facts. Who did, who who would you think would have the edge if it was like Drake and Kanye and like because they 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 calling it free Larry Hoover and I respect that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's like it's a burst. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we looking at the shit. Absolutely. So what do you? Know. I don't know. Dr Listen. Drake, I, I, I think Drake, man. I don't know why, but I feel like Drake. I'm not even, yo, I would have like, thought you said Kanye, man. <laughs> I, I, yo, I, yo, I'm a super fan of, of both of them, like, but I feel like, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like, I, I always was saying, like, yo, don't nobody want it with Drake. Like, I was like, yo, even Hope don't want it with Drake in the verses. I said, I, that was just me. Yeah, Drake been on fire, um, but I don't, Kanye, you know, you can't tell now because yo, I'm not gonna front. I thought, I thought, I thought Dipset was gonna beat the lock. So my my opinion is trash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucked up there. We know how that <laughs> went. <laughs> yeah, I was with the, the other night too, and, and AC. I was with the, me and Scram Jones. He was DJing for the locks. We went there, but yeah, they that that was just that was just something totally different. Shout but, out to DJ Who Kid on the check in. You know, you got a yeah. bunch of people on here checking you out. Craig G, bunch of a, a bunch of people checking you out. Um, tell them how to find your shit, how to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yo. How you can buy the the, the, the merch. Everybody want to walk around with the bing bong. Everybody want to be. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I looked at it in hindsight, I would have thought, "Fuck!" I loved it as a joke, but fuck your life. I think it would have been going too far, right? Yeah, like, yeah, but fuck your life, yo. But and you know what? It's like it's, I've been saying this. Uh, people notice me for it so much that it's just like a, it's like saying hello. You know what I'm saying? Like saying when I say bye, I'm like, all right, fuck your life. It's, it's become like just like a, just a greeting, period. But if you look at it just like for what it is, hell yeah, that's just that's how I was living back in the days. It was like, yo, you against me or my people, man? Fuck your life. But now it's just. You know, I've been running with it so long. I'm a changed person. Like I'm. You know, I, I, I grew up in the projects, and we would do, we would snap across the world. Just people watching across the world. Snapping me is like joking, where we tell yeah. jokes on each other. I would tell jokes all night with the stinkest chicks. The stink, like, like we would just go to five in the morning till the sun came up every Facts. single day of the summer. Just killing each other, and that's pretty much what you've been doing on your Instagram, and and people Absolutely. love that shit. Absolutely, it's yo, it's you know why I think people fuck with it because like I'm not fronting like nobody else. It's like just it's like you coming to Coney Island and hanging out with me. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be doing the same thing if if the cameras wasn't on, man. It's just authentic. It ain't nothing made up. Like I'm not, and you know what? People know like. It's not in mean spirits neither. Most yeah, of the time you can't see me because I'm holding the camera. No, no, you know it's not. You can't see it. It's, it's just being funny, all in love. And you know, I wish I could do what you do because I got this thing where I go down to like Sixth Avenue in Manhattan, like five o'clock when everybody's getting out of the work, and I and I sit in the car and I people watch, and it be tinted windows, and I be snapping on everybody walking through. <laughs> But I keep it to myself. Right now, I got to watch everything I say. Everything I Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Like, with me, it's like, can't watch what you say. This, like, that, you know, Fat Joe, I'm, it's fucked up. I'm at a level where I can't bing bong them like that. Because they'll be like, Facts. oh, forget about it. Facts. Facts. They tried, they, they tried to get you. They tried to get you. It don't yeah, work, yeah. though. You're a dog, yo. <laughs> Yeah, they try to get you every time. But you know how that go. The love overpowers the hate any day. The love overpowers the hate. And you a loved individual. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, yeah. we're blessed, man. You're, listen, you, there wouldn't be a NEMS without a fat Joe, bro. Straight like that. 
Good looking, Nems, man. We love you, man. God bless you. I'm going to be in the town. I'm going to um, I'm, I'm get you. I'm, I want to bring you on the um, Times Square. 10, 9, 8, 7, Yo. 6, 5, 4. Is the Asian <laughs> dude. Is the Asian dude from Hangover? He hosting the shit too. Uh, yeah, that's Kelly, crazy. Uh, Osborne. And so, you know, I got to play. You got to come up in there with me on some bing bong. Just give it to him. And hopefully that opens some doors. I love you, my brother. I'm proud of you, man. Keep going. Thank Keep you. going. Keep going. Absolutely. Ain't no, ain't no stopping now. Coney Island, stand the fuck up. My guy. Man, listen, man, you guys, you guys think I'm a bandwagon guy, man. You don't know who I know. It's the bottom line is you don't know who I know. I knew the Bing Bong man before he was the Bing Bong man. You heard the man yourself. I'm looking at him yesterday. Normally, y'all what's up? Y'all was my homie names. My daughter loses it. Oh my God, Dad! Cause I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't be on TikTok. I just don't. And so my my daughter starts showing me little Nas X, this that he just said Will Smith. This shit out of control. And so you could never uh be happier for a more sincere person who went through so much in his life. I knew the story, but I wanted y'all to hear it. How he used to use drugs and, and overcame that. He was really, really bad. And you know, now he's a uh, sanitation worker plus he sells his merchandise. Man, this guy's an incredible. He is the meaning of never giving up. And look how God has blessed him. His words has went viral, where it's touched people all across the world. So you can never give up. That is what this show is about. Fighting through adversity, but never giving up. That's what we celebrate here. We don't celebrate the fuckery. It's all about your story of encouragement, because there's somebody out there that might need you to turn their light bulb on. That's why the big, big show exists. To show you that you could climb up out anything. Reminds me of my man, Two J's. Two J's in Vegas. Urban necessity came on the show. The man was homeless. He used to take a shower in the fucking water in Vegas, the, the water fountain, take a shower. One day he stood online, he seen the line, and they was all buying sneakers. He stood online, he went for somebody, they gave him $20. He did it two, three times in a row, bought his own pair of sneakers. Flipped that sneaker, turned it into two sneakers, turned it into 20,000 sneakers. He's a multi-millionaire now. Own some shit bigger than the gap. Reminds me of Corsi Martin from down in the Lower East Side. Used to hustle. Went to jail, did a lot of time, had a bunch of sneakers, came home, sold the sneakers, started his own business. All the workouts he learned in prison, he came to the Lower East Side and started teaching people the jail workouts. He's huge. These are the stories of inspiration. Soon, probably next week, I'm going to finally bring Guy Fisher on here. Guy Fisher is the first black man to own the Apollo Theater, the true godfather of Harlem. You need to read up on Guy Fisher. But the man went to jail, did 30, 40 years of jail, came home a professor. He's a professor. But they don't want you to believe that you are capable of that. They don't want you to believe that you can do it. You know, you got people in the projects. Let's talk. Y'all want the real shit? Put fire signs. You got people in the pro. I come from the projects. I come from welfare, face-to-face, -face, anything you could think of. Any type of ghetto shit, I am guilty of arguing with my girlfriends in the front of the projects. I'm the worst. 
I come from every ghetto stereotype you could do. But now you got people in the projects that think it's actually a blessing to be in the project. The project, I don't want to go too deep, but the projects, when you go inside a project and you see the walls, the way this shit is, the design, that's how it looks inside of Rikers Island. The jail. Don't want to go too deep. The guy who made the projects made the jail. So that when you go to jail, you feel comfortable. I don't want to go too deep. Now, but what I got to say is people go on the projects and they tell themselves, yo, I pay $200 rent. I get welfare. So I'm not going to get a job. I'm not going to, uh, because it is a, it's, a, it's a trap. It's a trap. And people don't like when I talk like this, but I'm going to keep it real. It's a trap. When you go on a project, you get $200 rent. That shit don't exist. So if you go to Manhattan in a regular building, you get a fucking apartment the size of a shoebox, it costs $10,000 a month. You're in a project, you got a big apartment. The more kids you have, the bigger the shit is. People in that motherfucker like they own the project. Now, if you need the help, I don't have a problem with it. I'm from the projects. My mother lived in the projects 40 years before I came, and I lived there my whole life. I am not downing anybody from the projects. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you think you're getting over. Imagine Jay-Z told himself, Yo, I'm staying in the projects. Fuck that. I'm not getting the job, no face to face. I'm going to live in the projects my whole life. The man wouldn't be worth $3 billion. So understand yes, the projects is necessary. Single parent mom, somebody going through a, a tough time instead of being broke, right? Or homeless. But understand that it stops you from being great. It prevents you from seeing your true talent. Fat Joe is from the fucking projects. I look like the Beatles in the middle of the projects. 146. Every type of ghetto shit you heard of, I've done. Government cheese. Robbed from the bodega to eat Chef Boyardee. You can't tell me about this ghetto shit. You just can't. I'm sorry. It bothers you that you can't take the cloth out of me. But you have to understand that at some point, you got to believe in yourself and take a risk because you have blessings out there. Blessings. That your mentality is an institutionalized mentality. So I'm not blaming nobody. No, yo, Joe forgot about the projects. He thinks he's better. That's not what's going on here. That's not what's going on here. What I'm trying to offer you is inspiration. I'm trying to let you know that there may be something bigger for you out there. And this is not really your home because you do not own the project. So your nephew gets caught selling drugs, they throw you out the projects. Anybody fuck up, they throw you out the process. It's really not your hood. It's really not. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, no risk, no reward. That's all I'm saying. Don't think you get Nova because you never know your greatness. If Fat Joe was like, yo, I got to stay on welfare. I can't take a chance. I can't this. I would never be living in this house. Living my dreams. Now, I am not pointing the finger at you. I have not changed. I'm not shitting on you. Just trying to spark a light bulb. Change the ideology. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity.
Meaning, whatever you're going through in life, relationship, jail, health, whatever, your so-called friends that you love and you would do anything for are not there by your side. Get rid of them. We talked about it yesterday. What was the shit we talked about? We talked about, hold up. Was, uh, repeat offenders. 100 lifestyle. My man said, repeat offenders. We tired of this shit. Recently, I had a guy who works for one of my best friends using drugs, and they keep giving him a chance, trying to help him, and the man fucked up. And I was talking to him, I was trying to defend him, and in the conversation I realized, these are the type of guys we can't defend no more. Unfortunately, when I met him, he was straight, he's a changed man, and I'm over that, okay? So if you're going through your darkest moments and they're not there next to you, fuck them. They're habitual, uh, re-offenders, what we said, repeat offenders, and they always fuck up, and you just, and we got, we done with that shit. Stay in the same shit like a hamster. People who thinks like that. Que quiere? Que quiere? Que hablo español? Tú no sabes que yo soy boricua y cubano. Crees que yo no sabe español? ¿Qué pasa contigo? Tú necesitas un peco o algo. Brother, you say Latino, bro. 100% que es tu problema. Well, for those who don't understand, the Latinos hit me up talking Spanish, trying to act like Joe Crack don't talk that shit. I talk it. Hmm. In a very direct way. Huh. Be clear. Salam alaikum, my brothers. So I'm for everybody. I'm for everybody. And so Casa Della, Saturday, Lower East Side, Avenue C, 10 to 12. Please do me the favor. Go support them in peace and unity. Now, last but not least, God. You don't believe in God, you have a problem. Something happened to me, the last something. Yo, what's up, Hank? Something happens to me. I'm praying to God so fast. So fast. God in good times and in bad times. And shout out to everybody in the doodle community. NFT. I try to show you how to get the bag. Every chance I get. I try to show you. You should study how to get the bag. Anybody who's dressing terrible 2022, you have a problem because you have Instagram where you can watch influencers and people who dress fly. You can go to Zara's or whatever else, get it for cheap, and but you'll be dressed respectfully fly. Uh, and so, you know, when you see me getting to the bag in different ways, if you see me with a cartoon up there, that's Fat Doodle. You know Fat Joe is getting to something. Learn. Peace, y'all. We the biggest in the game. Cash App. Our partner. Our partner, Cash App. I need you to go to Cash App when I turn this off. Sign up. Using the code Fat Joe and get 15 free dollars. Go to Cash App. Code word Fat Joe and get 15 free dollars. Just last week, we gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars in stocks. What do you pay to watch this show? Nothing. Bing bong, pray. Who else? I need to know who else.
Or you can buy yourself a meal with $15. You can get a haircut. That's for you. Some people, $15 is a big deal. Peace, y'all. Yo, Rich. Who start to as I don't seek? No, me can't avoid her, she can't avoid me. And every time when me a guard up, well, me right, active. So yeah. active. Yeah, me a senatees. <laughs> well, let me know, girl, you cry. We kill her, they active. If you like a joke, watch her. Hmm. All of me kill her, they active. He's a Glock 17, man, strap it. Stop me up, head down, watch your mall up, back flip. Boss boy, head down, kick back, I'm on a heart, split tag. All of me kill her, they active. He's a Glock 17, man, strap it. Stop me up, head down, watch your mall up, back flip. Boss boy, head down, kick back, I'm on a heart, split get down. Don't start, not know you can't hang. Fuck around, you get this mangle. Life out, out, fast, I don't can't